Hello again. Today we have a 1990s ladies Rolex Oyster Perpetual. It's running fine, losing 25 seconds a day and 250 degrees of amplitude, but this can definitely be improved. So for this watch we are going to give the movement a full service and the case and bracelet a refinish. If you're interested, this watch will be up for sale on my eBay page, linked in the description. And while you're down there, check out my website if you want your watch serviced. We start the works by taking off the bracelet and taking it apart. You can see the build up of dirt we're going to have to get off before polishing it. Here is the watch head, turn it over and take the case back off. The gasket has seen better days so will be replaced. To get the movement out, we take the crown out by depressing the underside of the setting lever and pulling it out. Then we screw in the movement screws and rotate the movement until it gently falls out. We put the crown back in to align the hands and remove the hands with hand levers and secure them for later. The dial is just friction fitted so it can be lifted off and the back of the dial is covered in Rolexes. Lovely. We start the disassembly of the movement by taking off the hour wheel and cannon pinion. The movement is then turned over and secured and the automatic works removed. Where the spinning weight called the rotor can then be removed. The cover plate taken off exposing Rolex's famous pink reversing wheels which all just come out once the cover plate is removed. Next to be removed is the balance and making sure the mainspring is unwound, the pallet forks are removed too. It is a little difficult to see, but the jewels at the end of the pallet forks are quite dirty. Next, the train wheel bridge is removed, exposing the going train. We first take out the fourth wheel, which holds the second hand, then the escape wheel that has the odd shaped teeth to interact with the pallet fork, and last for the moment is the third wheel. Then we take off the click and the barrel bridge, where the click spring is removed, along with a bit of a mess of winding works. The ratchet wheel is taken off the going barrel, then the barrel is removed. With the intermediate wheel, the small hacking mechanism is taken off, and the centre pinion is taken off after its bridge is removed. Looking at the pivot jewels, we can see that some still have a little oil left on them, whilst others are completely dry. So it's a good thing we're doing this service to remove the old oil and replace it with fresh. The movement is then turned over so we can remove the remaining motion and keyless works. The keyless works are under this cover plate which holds the setting wheels, the setting lever spring, yoke and yoke spring, the setting lever and setting lever retaining spring, and the sliding pinion and winding pinion. These keyless work parts allow the watch to be wound up by hand and allow the motion works to be operated. The motion works take the motion of the going train and gear it to be able to show the time using the hands. The last part of the motion works to be taken out is the minute wheel, but the hour wheel and cannon pinion that were removed earlier are also part of the motion works. The final thing to do before cleaning the movement is to remove the mainspring from the going barrel. It's in okay shape, but new mainspring will help out the performance, so we'll do that. With the movement entirely disassembled, it is time to start the pre-cleaning. The larger and dirtier components are rinsed and brushed with isopropyl alcohol to remove the bulk of the dirt and the pivot holes are pegged out. The small components are placed in a basket to protect them and dipped in isopropyl alcohol. After they dried, the whole lot are placed into a solution of watch cleaning fluid, that is Elmer Red 1 to 9 concentrate with deionized water and the container with the watch cleaning fluid is placed in the ultrasonic cleaning machine for 10 minutes. After that, the parts are rinsed in fresh deionized water for two minutes in the ultrasonic machine. Then the second rinse is using isopropyl alcohol for six minutes in the ultrasonic machine. And finally, a third rinse, that is the second of isopropyl alcohol for another six minutes in the ultrasonic machine. Then the parts are dried in a stream of warm air for a few minutes. The two components that were not put through the ultrasonic cleaner were the balance and pallet forks. Instead, they were cleaned by hand in a series of washes and rinses. First, the same Elmer Red solution, then deionized water rinse, then an isopropyl alcohol rinse, uh, and then a final rinse in lighter fluid. Each solution was freshly prepared, and after about 10 minutes in the Elmer Red solution, each part took three dips into each solution, being lightly dried between each dip. Although this is more complicated and time consuming than using the ultrasonic cleaner, it is a lot safer for these delicate components whose shellac might be damaged during the ultrasonic cleaning process. Now to turn our attention to the case. We're going to give it a clean and then a polishing brushing. We remove the pendant tube to make it easier to polish the sides of the case. Then all of the case parts are given a scrub using Elmer EC90, a 1 to 25 solution with tap water and a soft bristle brush to scrub away the dirt. The case parts are then put in the ultrasonic bath for 10 minutes with the same solution. 
At this point, the parts are rinsed and dried with a cloth as they are going to be cleaned again after the polishing. The parts that aren't going to be polished, like the crystal, are thoroughly dried now though. We're going to start the refinishing by preparing the polished areas and reapplying the brushing. You can see that the major imperfections have been removed using a low grit brush stick. The areas to be polished are covered up with thermally resistant tape and the brushing was reapplied to the lugs of the case, the end links of the bracelet, the top of the buckle, the first and fifth links of the bracelet and the case back. The tape is then removed and fresh tape applied to the newly brushed areas in preparation for the polishing. Then, over a series of four polishes, the centre links and sides of the bracelet, sides of the case, pips on the bezel, the crown, the centre of the end links and the sides of the buckle are all brought to a high shine. After all of that, the case parts are cleaned again in the ultrasonic machine and we'll reassemble the case to give it a water pressure test. The pendant tube is screwed back in with a little Loctite. A new pendant tube gasket is installed and greased. The Rolex Sapphire crystal is put back in. You can see that it is a genuine Rolex crystal by the laser etched crown at the edge of the crystal. Then the bezel is pressed back on. A new crown gasket is greased and put in and the crown screwed into place. A new case back gasket is greased and fitted and the case back screwed on tight. The case was first tested to 50 meters but failed around the crystal gasket. So a second test was conducted at 30 meters. This time there was no leak, but because it only passed the 30 meter test, I wouldn't want to submerge it once the movement is in. I would only call this watch splash resistant. With the case and bracelet done, we can reassemble the movement. Starting with the going barrel, lubricating the walls with braking grease as it is an automatic mainspring, then putting the new mainspring in the barrel, oiling and replacing the arbor, and snapping the lid back on. Then the underside of the barrel bridge is reassembled with the crown wheel, the two intermediate winding wheels and the click spring. The main plate is secured to the movement holder and we'll get the going train in as well as a few other parts. The going train transfers the power from the main spring to the escapement and steps down the beat of the escapement into a usable rate such as one revolution per minute which is rather handy for a second hand. Starting with the centre pinion, that will hold the cannon pinion on the dial side of the watch the intermediate wheel, the going barrel, centre pinion bridge, ratchet wheel, hack mechanism, then the barrel bridge and the click, making sure it engages with the click spring. Next, the third wheel can go in, second wheel, which is also called the fourth wheel, I know, confusing, the escape wheel with its odd shaped teeth and the going train bridge. The movement is turned over to install the keyless works, whose purpose is to wind and allow the adjustment of the watch starting with the winding pinion, then the sliding pinion, the stem is oiled and inserted, the setting lever is put in and secured with its retaining spring, a little grease is put on the centre pinion so the cannon pinion can be fitted, then the minute wheel, yoke, setting wheel, this plate secures the minute wheel and setting wheel as well as holding the intermediate setting wheel, then the yoke spring and finally the setting lever spring. As we're on the dial side now, we're going to clean and oil the end stone of the escape wheel as well as oil the other pivot holes. The movement is then turned back over and the pivot holes are oiled on this side. Then the pallet forks are reinstalled. The movement is turned over once again to the dial side to oil the impulse face of the pallet forks through the rather handy holes. The movement is turned back over again and the balance wheel is installed. Now the cap jewels can be removed, cleaned and oiled. You can see the small drop of oil here and then reinstalled. The same process is done for the cap jewel on the other side. Again here, just with a little oil and replaced. Now we can reassemble the automatic works. The reversing wheels are treated with an epil arm. This is Episurf Nero, but the other common one is Fixer Drop. The reversing wheels are then dried, placed back in with the rotor wheel, oiled only on the center pivot of each wheel. Then the cover plate is put back on and the pivot holes oiled. And now you can see the famous Teflon coated reversing wheels that Rolex used. And the pivot holes are oiled on this side as well. The retaining clip for the rotor is placed back in and then the rotor is reattached to the automatic plate. Now the watch is left running for a couple of days. After that, it is fully wound and put on the time graph. And we got these results. This is looking really quite good now, so I'm not going to do any adjustments. We're now on the final straight. Let's get everything put back together. The hour wheel can be put back on. The dial indices and crown on the dial are gently buffed before being put back on the movement. The hands are buffed too. You can see the difference here between the buffed hour hand and the unbuffed minute hand. The hour hand is put on, then the minute hand and the seconds hand. 
The crown is removed, allowing the movement to be recased. The crown is then put back in and the case clamps are undone to grip the walls of the case and stop the movement from moving. Then the automatic works can be reattached and tested. The case is given a final check to make sure that everything is spotless and then the case back can be put on tight. The watch just needs its bracelet and there we go. One fully serviced and refinished Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. If you'd like your watch serviced, my website is linked in the description and I also have some watches for sale, including this one, on my eBay page, linked in the description too. Thank you and see you again soon. Bye for now.